okay so welcome back so we are uh, looking at now this is the last uh, module for week 5 so we'll continue our discussion as we did in the last module or uh, we we'll focus on uh, looking at how the information that we have learned so far will be applied in a practical scenario so we had looked at uh, how the, if you remember from the last problem uh, from the previous uh, 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 module for a previous video was on how with the better recycling system actually you end up reducing the calorific value i'm not saying recycling is bad but i'm always saying that we should be aware that if when we do good recycling of course it will have some impact on the calorific value so those things are important especially when you're doing to some calculation for waste to energy and other stuff so let's continue some of those uh, other other scenarios uh, where practical app, uh, scenarios out there so if you have a bit uh, we were continuing that impact of source separation on energy content we already did the math part of that so what is its implication so when we have a when we have its large loss of energy uh, uh, why why we we discussed that uh, so this is what whatever i was talking earlier has been kind of put in a bullet form here because if you are removing the highest energy content material so in a highest energy content material in terms of uh, for like a paper plastics we are removing them that's why we are seeing a reduce in energy content now uh, but the question is uh, is it good is it uh, is it really doing good for say we are doing going to do recycling so that means uh, we are removing some of these uh, recyclables out and uh, in general when we talk about recycling we have a positive feeling about it recycling is always seems to be better but how much better or are they really better some there could be certain scenarios and there are certain scenarios where actually if you take the recyclables and have to re carry that recyclable around for or like 100 kilometers or several kilometers before you can put it in a recycling plant and it gets processed so the amount of energy amount the extra truck that you required because if you're doing a source separation source separation means what you have this recyclables in a separate container so we will have uh, like a three-way bin here we have a recyclables so here we have the recyclable here we have uh, food waste or organic waste and then here we have whatever can go to a landfill or potentially to an incineration plant landfill or to an incineration plant so now we need three trucks to collect these three separately or we should have a truck which has three compartments so that they can be collected separately so but in in that case as well if you have the three compartments sometimes what will happen is because the recyclables are the bulky material they are lighter but they take more volume so they since they take more volume in the truck your uh, this compartment may get full while uh, the other two compartments are still empty so in that case you will have to take the truck back and then empty everything and then come back and do your collection so ultimately there may be a need for more trucks so if you have need for more trucks if you, uh, you have extra energy needed to collect the recycled material separately is it worth it the question is is it really worth it now how we'll find that out there is extra there may be requirement of extra trucks we can find out how much extra truck will be required extra truck means more gasoline more uh, more air pollution more noise more congestion associated with them so there are some environmental impact associated with those there are extra costs for collection those things are there as well uh, so the thing is that many many say, uh, ULBs what they are uh, do around I'm talking about in a global sense many ULBs what they do is they they said okay let's collect everything together then we'll bring it to the uh, separation facility and we'll do the separation over there that's a good thought but the problem there is what what happens since you are mixing them all together there there will be cross contamination so i think i mentioned to you earlier that say if you have uh, many times what happens uh, so you're drinking a bot you're drinking a coca cola or pepsi from that plastic bottle that 500 or 600 ml one then at the end uh, you kind of uh, you had to rush for something or you just kind of said okay this is enough i'm, I'm not going to consume it any further so you put this plastic bottle with little bit of coke left or a little bit of anything like that left in uh, in a in a recycling stream so now what is this happening like if in the recycling process the first thing they do is they poke a hole in those bottles so when they poke a hole what this coke will go and contaminate the other plastics as well now this 
that Coke or Pepsi or whatever juice was there, it needs to be cleaned up. So there is a there has to be a process to do that. That require, requires a machineries, that requires a certain setup, certain unit processes. So there is a cost, environmental cost and economic cost both in associated with that. So and your efficiency also goes out. That is why source separation is actually better. You can do source separation and we also encourage people to not do that thing. I, 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 I think I told you that in Auckland, New Zealand, they even tell people that why do not you wash your bottle. You just rinse the bottle one time with water before you put it in the cup side. Of course, you are increasing the water footprint there. So, you need to be careful. You need to, you are increasing the water footprint by washing those bottles because you are creating more wastewater now. So, but you again, uh, you have to look at the whole things in a totality. That is what I was trying to explain in the previous course that we had, I had in the NPTEL platform on the SOYAM as well as on the SOYAM platform, which is run parallelly uh, on life cycle analysis. So, those that is what this whole concept is all about looking at the big picture systems approach, looking at uh, things from a holistic perspective. So, you need to do a more, uh, you need to do a more complete assessment of the cost and operation of the system, provide useful data and then talk many things which may sound uh, good, which may look uh, from good from a surface may not be as good as it looks. So, you well, for that we we'll do something uh, what we call life cycle analysis. We already kind of talked about that and I think uh, uh, there was an NPTEL course offered on it in the last semester and I, I guess it will be offered in the future semesters as well. So, so based on the, this is again uh, this, these are these kind of discussion uh, for that is what uh, that is this is what I want out of this uh, like after you are done with this course uh, that is what I said that uh, if you look at the intended audience for the course I want the people from ULBs take this course as well. I hope they are and uh, because this is uh, this, these are the things that they need to discuss when they choose a certain in integrated waste management system for their ULB because otherwise we will be making mistake we will be will be not looking things in a holistic perspective and uh, we will have we will make certain calculation which is not true and then we'll have problem of what we are witnessing over last 10 15 years where we are designing certain systems and then many of the systems are failing uh, there have been a recent book done in this area, not in my backyard, uh, which is uh, from CSE Center for Science and Environment, and they had tried to document it, waste management system situation in country. Uh, it, that book is, I think, around a maybe a year or year and a half old now. So, but uh, it's a pretty good summary of uh, what is the what are the different uh, we we had we tried to do composting, many of the compost plant didn't work. We tried to do uh, waste to energy, many of the waste to energy plants were struggling and the reason for that is we do not take this whole, uh, we have to kind of uh, this uh, systems approach and this whole thing has to be taken into perspective. We need to think, start looking things in a, in a, a I would say in a systems way rather than just focusing on one. So, okay, we will do this and just do it, but that not, a, not realizing the implication of doing that on all the associated factors associated, uh, all the associated uh, unit uh, uh, and uh, other stake, uh, stakeholders associated with that. So, I hope this, uh, like uh, this, these things are getting uh, uh, clear as we are trying to make some discussion on in this particular course. Again, discussion board, discussion board, discussion board. I want you to keep that active so that uh, it we, uh, we want this course to be lively course. We do not want it a one way traffic. So, please do that. And uh, so, and then other thing is that another we will look at some math in terms of impact of home compactors on collection. So, if you are say many, many places uh, they are uh, suggesting that why do not we do a home compactor. So, every house is they have a small compactor, you use it in uh, the house where you compact the garbage. So, if you assume that there is around uh, 100 kilogram of garbage present, 100 kg of waste. Uh, that is the volume reduction that could be as so if you use a compactor of 320 kg per meter cube. So, for each of the component, uh, remember from the previous uh, slide paper and how much the other components out there, there was a long list. So, if you do for each of those components, you can find out what based on their uh, uh, compacted density, uh, you can find out how much, uh, what is their initial volume, uh, what is the initial volume each for the each component from their density. Again, that table 3.4, which is uh, has been presented uh, in uh, previous slide in the, in uh, you can see it in the previous video and you will also have a PDF of this uh, whole slide set, which you can look at. So, 
based on that the initial mass versus initial volume we can calculate what is the sorry initial mass divided by the initial density we can calculate the initial volume for each of these uh, uh, component so once we know that uh, so here here it is uh, again uh, reproduced for you so you don't have to look at the previous uh, video uh, so here uh, you have this different components so these are the solid waste uh, out of 100 kg based on their percentages these are their specific weight so we can calculate what is the individual volume so these are the in so we can say well, 100 kg is around 0.988 meter cube this is uh, based on their uh, specific weight this is uncompacted we are not we have not done any compaction yet and uh, there are certain items here yard waste uh, wood uh, those things usually doesn't get compacted so this one and this one other metal dirts and ash they don't get compacted so we'll not consider them in terms of the compaction so we'll take their volume off of this total of 0.988 so here what we have done out of 100 kg uh, based on the composition of the waste we have found out what is the weight of each and every of these component and uh, for different different components we know each of each one of those a specific weight we have calculated what is their initial volume and these are their uncompacted volume and we added them up so that's the total uncompacted volume and what we are saying is that yard waste wood other metals dirt and ash these are typically not compacted they don't get compacted so we will exclude these volumes from this when we do this uh, compaction uh, calculation so let's uh, go ahead and do that so here there are two streams of household weight yard waste wood other metals and ash they are not usually compacted so we add them up and we get the value of 0.294 so that's uh, uh, the value for the non-compacted, it's not going to get compacted. Everything else uh, can can be compacted. So, what is the initial volume of the compacted material? Total was 0.988 from the previous table, minus this value over here. So, we get 0.784. So, that's the volume of initial volume, which when we apply this compactor of 325 kg per meter cube, we can compact it further. So, now let, let's use the compactor. So in terms of the mass of the uncompacted material, uh, we got uh, mass of uncompacted material. If you add the mass of these ones, we had waste wood, other metals and ash. So that's around 26.5 kg. Mass of the compactable material, which is 100 minus that because total was 100, isn't it? If you remember from the previous table. Again, all these math, I'm, I'm going a little bit, uh, uh, little bit faster because these are all simple math and you guys are uh, like a undergraduate, graduate students or some uh, practicing professionals, you all know this, this is uh, pretty straightforward. But my advice, my, like you go through these uh, by yours, use your calculator and go through this calculation once by your as well. If you need to use calculator, you can do it by uh, use without calculator as well. But does go through these numbers once just to make yourself and if, if there is any mistake, do let us know. Uh, there, uh, I, I hope there is not, but if there is any, just uh, I'll, uh, it, will be, it will make us uh, happy if you let us know if there is any problem. So, mass of uh, compactable material because total was 100, uh, uncompacted is 26.5, so subtract that and then you get 73.5 kg, that is the uh, uh, compactable material. Now, the volume after compaction, since uh, total mass is 73.5, remember with the compactor what was 320 kg per meter cube. So, the volume after compaction we can get up to 0 0.230 meter of cube. So, initial volume is 0.784. The final volume after compaction is 0 0.230. So, that is a lot of reduction in volume. Now, so what is the volume reduction? 0.784 initial minus 0 0.230 the final and this is the volume reduction we are seeing in terms of that. So, now if you want to convert that as a this is the uh, actual volume reduction, but if you put it in the terms of percentage reduction. So, percentage reduction of the compactable material. So, initial volume was 0 0.784, final volume is 0 0.230. So, which is uh, this uh, divided by the initial volume 0 0.784. So, around 71 percent is what of the compactable material. So, 71 percent volume reduction is there. Now, if you look at the total in terms of the total volume, so if you total was percentage reduction total, if you take the uh, like you add up this is the 0 0.988 uh, minus uh, 0 0.434 because these are uh, cannot be uh, compacted like uh, this is the initial uh, uncom uncom like initial uh, volume of uncompacted material which will stay as it is and this is the comp after compaction the volume. So, if we add this 
with this that's the total volume isn't it because this this material is not getting compacted this is the material which was compacted and that's the final volume for that so if we add these two that this number uh, let's change the color here uh, if we add this number uh, with this number uh, that will give us the the total so that's what we have done it over here uh, we added those two uh, to get the percentage uh, uh, like a reduction in uh, uh, like a, the final reduction of uh, the volume and this is our total to start with which was there in the previous table and so if you take this is 56.1 percent. So, in terms of the total uh, although it is 56.1 percent if you look at just the compactable material it was around 71 percent. So, that is gives you uh, so these these things needs to be these kind of calculation needs to be done if we are trying to come up with some comp if we try to say okay we'll use a compactor truck or we'll try to avoid pe advise people to use some sort of compactor compaction at home so we need to do these kind of calculations to really see the numbers and without good numbers you cannot really do good design so for uh, that's the uh, i'm trying to uh, hit this point again and again in this course is good data good data and good data that if you somebody asks me what is the three most important things in terms of uh, uh, solid waste collection solid waste improvement in our country in India I would say collection of good data collection of good data collection of good data we have to collect good data from each and every for each and every ULB it will require some time it will require some money but it is worth doing it. Uh, it is it's worth doing it because then we will have a system which will be really designed for that particular scenario. Otherwise, what is happening is we are just designing system in a taking some theoretical calculation, some examples here and there and then we, we are seeing lot of failures and we need to avoid those failures. Most of the technologies which have been tried in India is working somewhere else. So, it is not the technology's fault, it is the fault Many times people say, "Oh, the te this technology is not going to work in India." Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I do not agree. There could be some, but for most part, most of the technologies which is being used elsewhere in the world can be used in Indian context. Uh, but we need to do proper preparation for that. We need to do proper homework for that. We need to do proper calculation for that. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate uh, uh, in this particular course. So. So, once uh, like another thing is that uh, if you are what is the problem if you start using this compactor what are the such, such some issues not problem like some other issues which comes with the compactor. Now, if you reduce uh, if you use the compactor it will reduces the bulk volume of the waste, but the weight remains the same although the volume goes down the weight remains the same. So, what does that mean that actually it it can complicate the collection system why because there are maximum weight guidelines there are maximum weight guidelines on waste containers for collection personnel because those collection personnel they have to lift those garbage bags and put it in the truck if it's a manual collection or if you have a hydraulic arm which is again very costly truck say if we 10 years 15 years 20 down the 20 years down the line if you get those kind of trucks as well then those hydraulic arm is lifting more weight so that means that is hydraulic that more energy is being used to collect that to garbage too. So, you need to be uh, again you more energy you are using there. So, whatever the compactor you used by saving some space, but since you are using more energy to collect those in the collection system are you really doing environmental good? We have to do life cycle again we are kind of going back to that. So, it is again it is it's, it's, uh, it's not that simple it is uh, things uh, does require little bit of thought there is a little bit of thought process is required, but coming back here there are maximum weight guidelines because if it is too if it is too much of a weight it is it will start hitting the back at the back of uh, the person like uh, you because it say me and you uh, lifting 15 kg one time in a week or two week or uh, few it is ok, but uh, uh, see think about that uh, person who has to work uh, in a waste collection uh, system every day going to lifting that weight at several places think about what will happen to his uh, his or her uh, like a, his back. So, it is it's, 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 it's from an ergonomic standpoint from an occupational health and safety standpoint there is a limit of you cannot have more than 15 kg per bag. So, that is uh, if you start compacting you may you may exceed this 15 kg. So, you need to be again look at the, that aspect and typically the compacted volume uh, will vary around 20 to 60 percent that also type depends on the type of waste that is there and now since you have compacted it and you are bringing it to a recycling facility 
and uh, this you know, paper, plastic, textile, everything is compacted together, nicely compacted. Now what you need to do at the recycling plant, you have to start uncompacting it. Because they cannot be, the, you have to separate all these different material. Paper has to be separated, plastic has to be separated, textile has to be separated because each one is recycled separately. So if you are sending it to a dump or you are sending it to a waste to energy plant, that's a different matter. But if you are sending it to a recycling facility, some sort of processing facility, you have to, uh, it will complicate the process. Now you need to start having this un uncompaction device there. First you compact it because you, that way you will save some transportation costs for sure. But then there will be additional cost for uncompacting the same material at the recycling facility. I am not, again I don't, uh, we have to look at all these from an unbiased perspective. Sci the data has to make the decision. It's not you and me, uh, that's the problem. It's uh, many times people make, uh, we make our decision based on our biasness, based on our intuition. What I'm trying to say, let's have good data and let's use that data to make the decision. So I'm there trying to illustrate those uh, examples here. So, and what are the different things that, that can pot potentially happen? So it will complicate things at the recycling facility because, uh, because you have to break, uh, uh, break up for the compacted waste to recover recyclables unless uh, they are removed prior to compaction. If we do it prior to compaction, that means again, uh, source separation is happening. So that's, uh, that's a different thing. Again, so we have, there are several scenarios uh, can be lined up, uh, scenario A, B, C, D, and we have to do the math to find out which scenario works best uh, for that particular city, but uh, based on what is the market and all those things around here as well. We talked about the recyclable markets and other things earlier in the class. So uh, now in terms of impact of uh, home, uh, 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 like a, if you have a, uh, like a source separation, uh, what, what impact it has if you do the source home separation uh, of waste uh, on waste collection. It's, uh, there is a, if, a, if the community is purchasing a specialized vehicle for curbside collection for the soap source separation, say the three containers are provided. Now if, if you want to do for some sort of source separation in, uh, along this line, where you have uh, three containers you provide to every house. One is for newspaper, cardboard, one is for plastics and glass, one is for aluminum and tin cans. So you have these three separate recyclables. Again, it's good, um, uh, recyclables will be separate. You can process them separately. You will be able to sell the material in a higher price. But uh, that means more uh, money required for the collection system. So here, separated and placed by the curbside once per week. Uh, so estimate the capacity requirement for each of these uh, stuff. There is certain data given to us, uh, data in terms of uh, uh, what uh, like 80 percent of the recyclable materials will be separated. Uh, we are assuming that 80 percent will get separated. Newsprints represent 20 percent of the paper waste. Paper waste is newspaper, office paper and other, other things. Newsprint is essentially the newspaper. When we say newsprint is essentially we are talking about this newspaper. That's uh, and then number of homes and on 1500 homes at uh, same we have taken at what we had earlier, uh, 1500 homes, 3.5 persons per home, garbage truck is 30 meter cube, each recyclable vehicle is 12 meter cube, per capita generation is 2 kg per person per week. And these data can vary. This is just an illustrated illustration. Uh, the data, these data can vary. So there is no, no problem, uh, like uh, there is no uh, issue associated with that. So let's, uh, okay, so we let's look at the uh, kind of the math part of it. So again, we'll go back to the table where uh, total waste generation, 2 kg per person per day, 1500 person, 1500 homes, 3.5 people in one home, uh, seven days a week. So waste generation is 73,500 kg. So that's the waste we are generating uh, in a week. Now let's set up the table uh, with uh, different stuff. Again, uh, we'll use the same uh, percentage composition as used earlier from the table uh, 3.4, which I kind of, I think I say it over here. Yeah, it is over here. So based on the percentages from table 3.4, which already has been provided to you earlier. So, and then you have, uh, so these are the solid waste uh, different components uh, for both organic and inorganic. The specific weight came from there. Uh, we can calculate the volume that is required. So this is, uh, uh, so as you can see, the for one some items you have big volume because of the low density. It's a higher volume shows up over there. So now this is the basic information that we have for different waste components. 
And when we go, uh, if you look at uh, volume of uh, cardboard, volume of newsprint, volume of plastics, because based on the data that was given to us that 80 percent gets recycled, we know the individual volume just, just from the previous slide. We can calculate volume of each one of these. Again, uh, I will encourage you to do all these math by yourself once to kind of check. It's all pretty straightforward because 80 percent was the we have the 80 percent was the recycling given to us. We knew they knew this volume, this data came from the previous table and we use that to get uh, what is the volume of uh, different materials uh, uh, of each of this uh, component. Now, if you want to collect this uh, volume separately and uh, so the, there will be the vo volume of recyclables if you add all these up, we get 242.9 meter cube around 243 meter cube. 12 meter cube is the vehicle which no compaction, uh, which uh, recyclable truck. So, 242.9 divided by 12, so that is 20.2. So, that means we need around 21 trips. So, if you use that truck, we need around 21 trips to do the collection. So, if we, if we take around 21 trips each week for recycling and the total mass is 20,168, which was we did it in earlier, earlier slide. So, that is uh, for that. Now, this is uh, for 21 trips required for each uh, one of those. If you do the all the uh, recyclables are collected separately, uh, sorry, together. And uh, now, if you do the remaining solid waste, uh, volume of waste is 483.1, what is the minus you separate the recyclable part, that is the volume you get for separate MSW. Now, if you use the compactor, which is 30 meter cube per vehicle, and uh, let us say the compactor would waste to a density of 300 kg per meter cube. Um, so, mass of waste. 73,500 was the total, if you remember, and 20,168 was the recyclable. So, the if we subtract that, so this is the MSW that needs to be collected as well. This is non-recyclable. Volume, we know the volume uh, uh, based on the kg, uh, we 300 uh, kg per meter cube is the compaction. So, this is the volume that will be uh, needed. Now, 30 meter cube per truck, so we need 5.9. So, that means there is 6 trucks, 6 trips are required. So, if you are just hauling solid waste, uh, we need 9 trips per week, uh, one set of MSW vehicles. So, if you just do it, uh, if you do not do uh, like a uh, recyclable collection separately, you need 6 trips plus 3 trips, uh, so total 9 trips you need uh, for one uh, for a vehicle. But uh, if you collect this recyclables uh, separately, you have 6 trips per week for MSW and 21 trips per week when there is a smaller vehicle for recyclable. Now, so, in terms of uh, this uh, collection system, that means more, more trucks required, uh, that's, that will require, uh, you have to look at, uh, you typically one crew is one day of waste collection, four days of four days for recyclable, they could do probably. And then we have to look at the, we have to do this collection routes as well, how this uh, waste will be collected. So, that needs to be, that uh, needs to get done as well for, uh, in terms of the collection system. So, that uh, gives us uh, like how to go about this. Then if you separate the wet waste, say if you if you decide to do that, I will do the wet waste like the green bag as well. Remember uh, some say when we are talking about the collection system from different uh, places around the world, I showed you in for example, in San Francisco, they have a wet waste separate like food waste separate and the dry recyclable separate and then the thing going to the landfill. So, there are three way collection. So, this is for food waste, this is another for recyclable, this goes to the landfill. So, if we want to do that kind of system here, uh, if you want to implement something similar over here, the volume of food was 22.8 meter cube again from the previous table, recyclable was this much, 20 meter cube double loading, green plus blue vehicle, you can use that as well, similar some, some, some cities use that, 10 meter cube for blue, 10 meter cube for green, blue is for the recyclable and green is for the compostable or the food waste. So, again you can calculate number of trips, how much trip you will be required uh, for recyclable as well as for the green and uh, now how much you require for uh, MSW vehicle and then you if you look at that you need 6 trips per week if you had just done everything together and uh, but if you do blue and green separate you need 25 trucks per week. So, we need to have uh, we probably have to have uh, that but what we have seen is uh, green for the green, you can do it in three trips, but for recyclable, you need 25 trips. That means uh, we actually need more volume on the recyclable part. So, this uh, truck with two compartments, 
the compartment which will carry the recyclable probably needs bigger volume because uh, these are bulky material and the compartment which will carry the food waste can work with a smaller volume. So, we may have to work with the truck manufacturer and uh, uh, redesign the truck so that our collection system gets more efficient. So, those things uh, again practical application again those things uh, once you do this kind of math and then you can talk to those truck manufacturer other than then since if you are buying several number of truck you can always convince them that i don't i want your truck but what you have to do is just to increase the volume of recyclable site and reduce the volume of the food waste site so that i can uh, reduce my number of trips going back and forth otherwise what will happen recyclables will get filled up then i have to come back although my food waste is still empty food waste side is still empty. I have to come back, unload it again, go back and collect it. So, those things uh, uh, I have to do for that. So, these are some uh, uh, like a real problems uh, which uh, needs uh, to be done. And uh, so, let us uh, how will it say we will kind of uh, stop this uh, video at this particular point. So, again what I have done uh, in this last uh, I would say two and a half videos is I have tried to illustrate all these different types of practical prob practical issues that may come up when you go for designing of integrated solid waste management system especially for the collection and the transportation part we haven't gone in treatment part yet which we'll do we'll do similar math in the treatment part as well but for the collection and the transportation part when you go for uh, the design of a for any ULB for any of these upcoming smart cities in the country we need to do these kind of mathematical calculation these are not difficult it requires some time but again can be done and then we the, the design that will come up will be more realistic and uh, will have less failure uh, happening uh, in terms of uh, waste management infrastructure. So, with that uh, let us uh, stop this video I encourage you to again uh, make the discussion board lively ask questions will be again uh, go over this math uh, go over these problems by yourself if you have any issues feel free to send us uh, uh, on uh, through the discussion board that is the, the platform that we will use in terms of the mode of communication. So, we are using and we will be using. So, so with that let us uh, close it and then in the next uh, week uh, which will be the week 6 we will talk little bit about uh, some of this collection routing issues and then we will start looking at the treatment and the disposal system. So, I hope you are enjoying this course. Thank you and look forward to seeing you in the next week.